Hello 1P. We're continuing talking about rates of change here, although yesterday we only dealt with speed. Today we're going to take a look at other rates of change, and this should actually go pretty quick because it's the same stuff we were doing yesterday, uh, just slightly different. So we're going to do this example here. At a flea market you notice a stand that allows you to string your own necklace. You purchase a wire and then pay a set price for each bead you use. The graph illustrates this relationship. So here's our relationship here. I've given you a graph. Uh, we will use our method from yesterday to find out what the unit rate or the rate of change is from the graph. So the method yesterday for finding the rate of change was to draw a triangle. We need to know um, how much it costs for a set number of beads and the easiest way to do that is to find some nice points on this graph and draw a triangle. So where are my nice points? And remember what I mean by nice points are these ones. The ones that are on the intersection of our grid. The things that are already there so that we know exactly what it is and we don't have to estimate where it is. So here's a nice triangle. Here's a nice point here. There's a nice point here and there's a nice point here. Now as far as drawing our triangles, I can draw this little triangle, I can draw this little triangle, or I can take and draw this great big triangle between um, the two points that are far apart. It's not going to matter which one I pick. They're all going to give me the same answer. So I'm going to pick two points that are farther apart. I'm going to take this one and this one and I'm going to draw the big triangle. Now what I have to do to figure out is to see what this actually tells me. This tells me on the bottom we have number of beads and up the side we have cost. So on the bottom I'm going from zero beads right here to eight beads. So that tells me that eight beads raised the price by this much. Okay. So along the bottom I went from zero to eight so this distance here is eight and up the side I went from four to six. So four dollars to six dollars so this is a two dollar increase up the side. Okay. Be very very careful of scale Sometimes the bottom is not exactly like they, they don't have the same scale on them. Always look at what these are. So between two and six, or be, sorry, between four and six is two, and between zero and eight is eight. So this number is called a rise, and this is called a run. Now, what does it actually mean? Well, it means that every time I purchase eight beads, my price increases by two dollars. Now it has nothing to do with the fact that it started at four dollars in the first place. We're going to talk about that in just a minute. But every time my beads increase by eight, my cost increases by two. So here's our unit rate. Remember we do rise over run is our rate of change, or a rock. Okay. In this case our rise is 2 and our run is 8 and 2 divided by 8, if you actually punch that into a calculator you can if you, if you don't know, 2 divided by 8 is 0.25. So 0 0.25. Now remember what each of these stood for. The 8 along the bottom was number of beads. So the 8 on the bottom is beads. And up the side, our rise was $2. So our answer is going to be in dollars per bead. Now, what happens if I had have chosen two different points on here? Well, I'm going to show that to you. If I had chosen this point and this point to make my triangle, I'm going to make a little red triangle here. Okay, if I had chosen those points, well, take a look. Up the side, I'm only going from 5 to 6. So I've only got a 1 there, and along the edge I'm going from 4 to 8, which means that this is just a length of 4. So if I did rise over run, and I'm going to do that in red right here, rise over run, if I did rise over run there, it's 1 over 4, or 0 0.25. You get the same answer. 
It doesn't matter that I used a tiny little red triangle as opposed to a big green one. I get the same answer. It's still 25 cents or 0.25 dollars per bead. Okay. So what does this unit rate represent? It represents the cost of purchasing one bead. Okay. The cost to purchase one bead. Okay, let's have a look here. Uh, number of beads, zero beads. Let's take a look. We're going to make this table. If I have zero beads, it still costs me four dollars according to this table. Zero beads, if I look up here, the cost is four dollars for zero beads. Uh, that's kind of weird. We don't buy any beads, but it still costs us four dollars. We're going to have to think about that in a minute. Um, the really nice points here at four beads, it costs us five dollars. Uh, and then at eight beads, it costs us six dollars, but we don't go up to eight beads. Now, what about the stuff in the middle? Well, each of them is a quarter, right? Um, we know that from here. So for one bead, it's going to cost us four dollars and twenty-five cents. And for two beads, it's going to cost us four dollars and fifty cents. And for three beads, four dollars and seventy-five cents. Four beads, five dollars. And then for five beads, five dollars. We're still going up by twenty-five cents each time. So our first difference is 425 minus 4 is going to give us 0 0.25 and 450 minus 425 is 0.25 and 0 0.25 and 0 0.25 and 0 0.25. Okay. Our first differences, look at that. Our first differences were all the unit rate. Unit rate. And that is actually not a coincidence as long as this goes up by one. If this all goes up by one for the number of beads, then our first differences are going to give us the unit rate. Okay. If these went up by two, I would have to take our first differences and divide it by two okay, to get what our unit rate is. So calculate the first differences. What did we notice? Okay, what we noticed is the first differences, the first differences, differences are equal to the unit rate. So they are. Uh, and now here's this. Why does it cost you something if you use zero beads? Well, remember that this necklace is not made up of just beads. Okay, uh, We can put as many beads as we want on the wire, but we have to have a wire first. So it says you purchase a wire. So in th the necklace has two components. It has one wire and then um, as many beads as you want. So it costs us zero. Um, we have to buy a wire to start. We have to buy a wire to string the beads. So what does that mean the wire costs? Well, if we take a look at it, it cost us four dollars before we even started. So the wire costs us four dollars. So we have to buy a wire for four dollars in this case before we string the beads. Okay, conclusions. If you use rise over run on any straight section of graph, it will give you a unit rate for the value on the y-axis versus the x-axis. So rise over run gives us a unit rate. If the independent variable has a constant difference of one, and that's important, a constant difference of one, the first difference will give us the unit rate. The same as finding it on the graph using rise over run. Okay. So that will give us, as long as this is 1, this will be our unit rate. And lastly, uh, the value at the x-axis gives us a fixed value. So this thing here, 
in this case our fixed value is the cost of the wire something that doesn't change the wire still costs four dollars whether I buy five beads or whether I buy 50 beads this cost does not change according to the number of beads so it's called a fixed cost so I'll put that here and we'll call it the fixed cost or more generically fixed value because we don't always talk about money when we're doing these things. So the fixed value is the part right on the y-axis. When this is zero, that gives us the fixed value. Uh, in our example, the fixed value was the cost of the string. So there's all kinds of other situations where you might have a fixed cost. Uh, but we're going to leave it at that right now. Give the homework a try.